sometimes thank you can be rather cheap. What about a thank you that goes much deeper? Let's think about that today. Hi, I'm Father Mike Manning. God bless you. Thank you very much for tuning in. I want to talk to you about the word thank you. Thank you. We throw it around all the time. But let's see if we can maybe get into some of the depths of what really a Christian should be thinking about whenever they say thank you. Well, if you want to talk about what a Christian says, let's go to Jesus. And let's, let's, think, about, let's think about how he dealt with that concept of thanks. One of the greatest stories is the story of one time he was traveling with his apostles and disciples, and they were leaving probably the area where he had lived, which is in, in, in Nazareth, and they were heading towards Jerusalem, and they were going through an area called Samaria. Now, as they were wandering along, all of a sudden, they started hearing people yelling, and they didn't know what it was, and the yelling became very coarse and very, very difficult to understand. But as, it, as they looked over on one side, there from the shadows, came ten men who were suffering with the disease called leprosy. Ooh, it was a terrible disease. It was a disease that, well, we know of full leprosy today, but anybody who started to get any kind of a rash or a skin disease, they became the type of person nobody wanted to be around because they thought that it was catching. <laughs> you got around a person who had this disease, you were going to get it too. And what happened when you got leprosy, whether you were a king, a teacher, a lawyer, a very important person, everything was just great in your world, man, this came and you became just lost. I mean, nobody wanted to be around you. If you were married, you couldn't be with your spouse, you couldn't be with your children, you couldn't do your work, you couldn't fill the dreams that you might have filled mo so much of your life because suddenly, bam, this came up. You know? And what you had to do was, you had to just find an, a group of people that had the same problem if you wanted to have any social life, and they didn't care because they had this leprosy and they were suffering, and so they'd already caught it, if you will, and so they would come together. And the scripture says, that they would have to have like bells and they'd have to shout out if anybody who was healthy was coming around, unclean, unclean. <laughs> Imagine what that must have been like. Just, just think about that. You, know, the, you and I both know what it is to be, to be, to be lonely and we can, we, can be, we can be afraid and we can be cut off from other people. But this was like a life sentence that no matter how long they lived, they were going to have to be cut off from their families, from their friend, from the, the ability to perhaps go into the temple, to go into a synagogue and be able to worship and just have you know, ordinary things. So here we are, Jesus is walking down the road and off on the side, there are these people and they start first calling out unclean. And I've got to believe that they would never have risked coming to Jesus but Jesus went to them. Now, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I, I might have told you this before about my experience with lepers. Many years ago, I, I had the privilege of going to India, and I went to a town called Madras, which is on the eastern side. It's about in the middle of India. It's over there, and this is where they think St. Thomas lived, and so it's a very sacred place, but oh, it was very hot. But the lady that was in charge, uh, she, uh, she said, let's, let's go up north, and there are a group of sisters and priests who are caring for lepers. Well, <laughs> you know, my, my heart sank when she, when she said that, but I thought, well, let, let's give it a try. We went into this leprosarium, and uh, when we arrived, oh gosh, everything was just, the, the, the bushes were cut and everything was clean. It was just a great place. And we walked into the chapel. Uh, they, they explained to me that what leprosy does is, 
it gets in and it starts eating the extremities of your body, uh, and that could be your fingers, or it could be your, your, your nose, your ears, you know, all those soft tissues. Oh, and then they, they explained another reality of this is that what happens is at first you lose touch with your extremities. You know, you, you don't feel that. And like Damien the leper, he realized that he was a leper when all of a sudden he poured hot water on his hand and ordinarily, you know, he would have done this, but there was no feeling. <laughs> And he knew that it had taken away. And, and this, is, this is the scary part of this, this lack of feeling. The reason oftentimes they lose these extremities is because when they're sleeping, um, the rats will come and will eat those parts of their body. <laughs> and they don't even feel it. You know? <sighs> I don't know about you, but that was the most most pitiful thing that you could imagine. You know. Afterwards, I celebrated Mass and, and uh, then came back and the lady in charge said, oh, let's go down and let's pray with the people. And I thought, oh gosh, I don't want to pray. You know, I don't want to even get close to them. But, but here she was, she, this attractive woman going out and laying hands on them. And so I said, well, and my macho, I got to do it too. And, um, but I'll, I'll remember the first time there was a little lady, oh gosh, she, she looked like she was about four foot five but her face had all been eaten up and uh, she had shoes on that were, were covering the fact that her, many of her toes were gone. You know? And there were, there were open sores on her face and in her hands. And she, she stood before me and I just took that moment of <laughs> reaching out and I laid my hands on her. And I'll never forget the look in her eyes and she looked up at me, and it was like, thank you for touching me. <laughs> thank you for touching me. You know, it was a beautiful, beautiful experience. Well, I think of that whenever I come across these stories in the Bible about lepers. But Jesus then, as I think, came to these people who were the outcast. And you know what he did? He healed them. He told them to go off. And he healed them so that their skin was like a, a little baby where it had been filled with oozing and, and sores. Suddenly they became like little baby skin. He healed them. But the fascinating point is, and, and I, I give you all this big story about leprosy and what it was like, to show the depth of what it should have been their gratitude. <laughs> of all of a sudden being cleansed. But despite this overwhelming gift of leprosy being taken away, only one of them, <laughs> only one, came back, fell at the feet of Jesus and said, thank you. you know? and, and Jesus looks at him and says, whoa, you know, where are the other nine? And then he looks at the guy and he finds out that this one, <laughs> this is the irony of the Bible, that this one was a Samaritan. And the Samaritans were considered heretics by the Jews of Jerusalem. They didn't believe in the Bible the same way that the Jews in Jerusalem did. They were heretics. They wouldn't have anything to do with them. So he was outcast even in that extent. And he's the one that comes and says, thank you, thank you. It talks about the enormity of of thanks in the eyes of Jesus. I, th I think of another uh, scripture where, where Jesus is praying to his father. He says, Father, I thank you that you saved all this learning from the wise and the learned, and you've given it to children. You know? I'm glad he did that too, because, because I, you know, if you had to be real smart and you had to be real influential in order to get the blessing of God, none of us would get there, huh? Another interesting scripture reference, and I'm going to talk about this in just a little bit more. Paul, in one of his letters, says a very interesting challenge. And we're, going to, we're going to talk about this in just a moment, and it's, it's this. He says, give thanks to the Lord always. Boo. <laughs> and now, I... Uh, I'm real good at giving thanks to the Lord when, when I think it's deserving. 
but what is my faith in God with regard to giving, giving it to him always, even when everything, when the, when the rug is pulled out from, from under me and everything is, is going wrong, do I then give thanks? Well, let, th- those, that's the scripture. Let, let's, let's, let's play around with some thoughts about, about uh, thanks. On the first level, uh, I, I think there's thanks that, that we give, which is, it, it's, a, it's the superficial thanks. You know, um, you, you drop something and someone picks something up and hands it to you, and, oh, oh, thank you. You know, well, yeah, we say that, you know. Um, we might even uh, write a little note of thanks for a, for a meal that was given. We say, oh, we write a note or an email saying, hey, thank you very much. And that's good. But in many ways, that's just kind of a little superficial thank you. And yet, that's important. But I'm wondering how much depth those kind of things have. There's another thanks that I think we need to be thinking about. And i um, um, tell you a story. I, I, uh, about a, oh, several months ago, I was in an airport and I was walking down the, the aisle trying to find my plane. And as I looked over, I could see this whole bunch of uh, service men and f- service women. They were in the, you know, the desert fatigues. They were ready to, I don't know whether they were coming home or they were going off. I don't know what happened. But I, uh, I remember I, I saw them. And something in me said, go over there and say thank you. And you know, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. But I think that we need to be more aware of those people in our lives that are, are making big sacrifices. That when you see a, a, a service person, a man or a woman, to walk up to them and look them right in the eye and say, thank you. Thank you for risking even losing your life in order to maintain the freedom and the goodness of what we have in our country. Thank you for being so patriotic. And you know, I've got a friend, uh, Jack Knight is his name. He had worked with me in the beginning of television. Jack was so moved by the, uh, the beauty of, the, uh, uh, of the, the firemen working, firemen and women working on, on uh, 9-11, that he goes around the country and he's composed a song and he'll call all the firemen and women together and uh, across the country whenever he comes across the fire station and he sings them a song, <laughs> sings them a song of thanks for doing what they're doing and, and expressing that love. And I think that, that's neat. That, that, that's that's a, a real good level of thanks. Being aware that there are a lot of beautiful people in our world. What about teachers? Huh? And what about people that work on roads, <laughs> that, that spend the, the hot afternoons working and putting cement down and, and allowing us to drive around? And hey, here's a little more private thing. What about, what about your priests and ministers, the men and women that are giving their lives to preach the gospel to you, to look at them and say, thank you. Now, I got to go. I'm, 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 there, there's a, a chance for a, a message right now. Would you listen to this? But I want to come back to you with a couple more thoughts of, of what it really means to be people filled with thanks. Please listen to this message. We'll be right back. Pardon my Lenten smile. What do you mean smile? Our understanding is that Lent is a somber time of negation and sacrifice. We hear the echoing words of John the Baptist calling out in the desert, repent. We see the 40 days and 40 nights of Jesus in the wilderness and being tested by the devil at the end. In the midst of these gloomy prospects of the 40 days of Lent, Pardon My Lenten Smile, written by Father Mike Manning, offers you some hope. Yes, this offers you a Lenten smile. Don't be gloomy, because the Lord says, when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except your heavenly Father who is hidden and your Heavenly Father, who sees what is hidden, will repay you. Do you want this Lent to be different? Pardon My Lenten Smile offers you the way to do this. 
Each day there is a quote from the day's scripture readings and a short reflection applying it to your everyday life. Filled with practical advice on how to live each day and make this Lent meaningful, it ends with a short and sincere prayer that you can call your own. By Easter, you will have a closer relationship with God. Father Mike Manning's book, Pardon My Lenten Smile, is going to put a smile on every face this Lent as we experience the Lord alive coming out of the tomb. We have got to smile, and that smile is to hang around on every face, every heart, and every soul for a long time. Get this book and bring a smile to your face and to the faces of everyone you love this Lent for your gift of $15 or more. Call the number on the screen. Get it today. Hi, I'm talking to you about the beautiful gift of thanks. And um, we've, we've wrestled with the beauty of what Jesus had for thanks with the lepers. We've also thought of the thanks that we do in sometimes the cheap way of, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, which, which kind of is shallow in many ways. But then the importance of giving thanks to some of the people who are sacrificing their lives for us, soldiers, uh, policemen and women, firemen, firewomen, um, the people that are serving as ministers in churches. You know? All these people need, need, we need the courage to walk up to them, look them right in the eye and say, thank you. Thank you for what you do. You know? And, and let, them, let them know how blessed they are in your life. You know? But then there's another level of thanks. So we talk about the superficial and we talk about the, 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 the people who are sacrificing for us. But now we come to a real, real struggle, and that's with people that are close to us, people who are members of our family, people that are dear to us, the people that we take for granted, <laughs> that are always around us and always doing the things that they do. And the problem is, because they're always around us doing the things they do, they oftentimes become more irritating than they do blessed. <laughs> You know what I mean? You're thinking more of all the things that seem to get in the way of, of peace and joy. And I think if we're, as we're wrestling here with that word of thanks, we need to be people who are willing to look to our husband, to our wife, to our children, to our parents, to our grandparents, to our dear friends who we might knock around with for, for a lot of our time. And take a moment and then this doesn't mean that you do this all the time, but maybe just take a moment when the Spirit moves in you and look them right in the eye and say, thank you. Thank you for being a, a foundation of my life. Thank you for being a pillar of my life. Thank you for allowing me to be able to be who I am because of the love that you give me. And then to say, and this is really the, the vulnerable and the challenging aspect of the thing, to even come to the person and say, I need you. <laughs> That's tough. That's tough because as soon as you start doing that, you make yourself vulnerable. And that's probably one of the reasons that we run away from being, being thankful people because if you're too full of thanks, then they might think they're going to use you and you might be taken for granted yourself. But in the midst of all of those fears, I, I ask you, would you think about that? Think about the people that you knock around with in your family, in your work, in, oh, here we go, even in your church. And so come to them and say, thank you. Thank you for who you are. I need you. Well, so we, got, we, went, we went superficial, we went with the, the people that are, that are serving us. Um, we went also to the people that are around us and the people with whom we need to say, oh, I, I, I thank you for, for being a vital part of my life. But now we come, we come to the real challenging one. And that's thanking God. Um, on one level, we take the beauty of God's creation so for granted. 
I live here in San Bernardino, California. I live in an apartment up on the on the tenth floor, and I have an unobstructed view of the San Bernardino Mountains, and the snow, and the and the rugged rocks, and the force and the power of that. And you know, <laughs> there's sometimes I don't even look out the window. I don't even realize the beauty of what I have. This this image of God's, or this gift of God, coming up with a, an image of strength and power in the midst of my futility and my weakness, there's God. And I need to say, wow, God, thank you for the mountain. Thank you for the snow. Thank you for the air. Thank you very much for the, for the whole ambiance that I have, that here in Southern California, if it's, if it's not the mountains, it's the desert. And if it's not the desert, I can go into Hollywood and I can see the, the lights and glitter of Hollywood, or I might go in the other direction and be able to stand on the surging waves of the sea and experience the power of God coming in those waves that come around. And just to say thank you, are you willing now to turn to God and just say out of your heart, looking around at all the things that are there, thank you, God, thank you. you you sustain me, you sustain the world, you enrich me, oh, and you reward me. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a rewarded person because of all the creation that you've given me. But now, now another one, and this is even a step deeper, and this is probably the most difficult aspect of it, of it all, and, and I've kind of intimated as at the beginning of my talk about this. It's that, that challenge of St. Paul to give thanks to God in all things. Well, with beautiful mountains and with people that love you and with, uh, with the success of a dream that you've had, oh, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. But what happens when the rug gets pulled out from you? What, got, what, what happens when all of a sudden you get the word from the doctor that you've got a sickness that might even be towards your death, a sickness that might even involve a great deal of suffering? And what about, what about all of a sudden a relationship that's turned upside down and inside out and it's broken? Paul is saying we've got to turn to God and say thank you. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I find that very, very tough. Because my natural inclination is, oh, God, where were you? <laughs> God, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? You know, straighten out. <laughs> Let's get, get everything back the way I want it to work. You know? But there's something in our faith, and it, this, this, this thanks becomes really the cornerstone of what our faith is all about if in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of brokenness, we can turn to God and say, thank you. And you know what we're doing is we're saying to God, you're greater than my plans. You're a God who loves me. And even though everything seems to be falling apart, I'm going to believe that you can turn what seems a mess into a blessing. You can turn what seems hopelessly confusing into a complete unity and peace and greatness. Ah! Ah, 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 that's tough, isn't it? That's tough. And yet that's precisely what faith is all about. We so believe in God's love for us that no matter what the circumstances, we're going to move with him. And once you say thank you, even in those catastrophes, I don't know about you, but in my life, when I've, when everything has fallen apart and I've, I've struggled to try to say Yes, Lord, thank you. Blessings come. Blessings come that are really overwhelming. And peace comes. And, and a vision comes, too, that all of a sudden those things that had been a blindness, all of a sudden I see things that I never saw before. So please, would you join with me in this, in this challenge of faith? And, and sometimes it's not something that you might even feel. <laughs> you might not feel real good about that. And the problem is that so many times we spend all of our time wanting to feel good about things. But sometimes we need to go against the feelings and we need to say with confidence, thank you, God. I don't feel, I don't feel real excited about this. 
but I believe you, you're a God who loves me, who's created me, who's sustaining me, and a God who will never let me go. And you're a God who has a vision far beyond my birth all the way to our victory in heaven. Now, stay tuned. We're going to do some praying. Thanks. Pardon my Lenten smile. Our understanding is that Lent is a somber time of negation and sacrifice. We hear the echoing words of John the Baptist calling out in the desert, Repent! We see the 40 days and 40 nights of Jesus in the wilderness and being tested by the devil at the end, in the midst of these gloomy prospects of the 40 days of Lent. Pardon my Lenten smile, written by Father Mike Manning, offers you some hope. Yes, this offers you a Lenten smile. Each day there is a quote from the day's scripture readings and a short reflection applying it to your everyday life. Filled with practical advice on how to live each day and make this Lent meaningful, it ends with a short and sincere prayer that you can call your own. By Easter, you will have a closer relationship with God. Get this book and bring a smile to your face and to the faces of everyone you love this Lent for your gift of $15 or more. Call the number on the screen. Get it today. If I've never said it before, I thank you very much for watching the program. Thank you also for your prayers. Thank you also for being willing to offer your financial support to allow us to continue. It's a a tough ministry uh, because we're totally dependent on your donations, and thank you for sacrificing that. And, And I say that not on the superficial level, but on the very sincere level. Thank you also for getting in touch with us. Um, I wanted, in in all of the programs, I want to offer a question, and I'd like for you to respond by going to our our webpage. And the question is, why is it difficult to give thanks? And and would you you get in touch with me, and would would you give me your opinion I'd really, I I know that I would really be blessed. Here I'm sharing with you all my thoughts of of thanks, but I want to hear what you have to say. And please, um, we really want you to share with us your prayer intentions. These are all people that have asked for prayers. Please get in touch with us. Pick up the phone and please remember this. Um, We're a poor ministry. We don't have a whole bank of people that can answer you live. There's going to be an answering service. Don't hang up. Please leave your message. We're going to get right back to you. Oh, Lord, help me to be more sincere in my thanks for the people in my life. May that deeper thanks give me the strength to really be able to thank you. Amen. May Jesus' love for you always make you smile. (laughs) 